Hey guys, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody's doing good on this wonderful Wednesday. Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing really good enjoying this hot weather that we've had. Um, today my video is about dealing with the grief of my father. Um, you guys know it's, it's less than a month away from April 21st of 2017. Um, it's been really hard. <laughs> it's been really, really, really hard dealing with this, um, and trying to still process it. Um, dealing with the grief of him has really been heartbreaking. It really has. Uh, I've known from, since the time I first started doing these videos and the search for reconnection with my family, um, I've, I've grown, I have a lot of growth. I am proud of myself. Um, my dad keeps on telling me, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You just don't realize how strong you are. Um, because I, when people ask me, you know, you are so sweet. You are so nice. You have this good spirit about you, but you seem like you've been through so much. And if I feel like I can actually talk to them and they can understand, I'll tell them my story. And just let them know, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. This is why I am the way I am. Um, this situation has humbled me a lot because I was going out of control. Um, I was negative. I was spiraling, spiraling because I just couldn't understand why my family did me the way they did me. Why was things going the way they went? You know, trying to just, just filter out everything I was going through in life at that period of time and it was really hard to deal with and it's just that pill of truth of him passing it, it's been hard to deal with it sometimes I guess because this is the first year and it's like I know what death feels like you know as experience like of a loved one passing away but this is just so different I don't know if it's just because he's a celebrity and it probably is because it's like once I feel like I'm I might be over something I hear something else that comes out you know I see that my um stepmom my ex-stepmom Maite um had had a tell-all tell -all memoir and um I just didn't know how bad that situation was and just reading what my baby brother went through that was a totally different story of um, grief you know I've I've lost a lot of family you know um, but this has just been the hardest you know I thought Losing my mom to cancer and watching her deteriorate uh, and her not able to say anything. I thought that was the worst thing I was going to go through. Like, things couldn't get worse. You know, um, and dealing with this, it's really hard. You know, knowing, longing to be around your family and you're reaching out and no, it seems like nobody is hearing you. And even though you guys, I love that you guys are watching my videos and everything, but it's just like, I feel like it's a guy getting right for you to be with your family. It's a guy getting right for you to know what your background is, to know what, what runs genetic in your family, um, what, what your heritage is, you know, um, all those things, I feel like as a God given right, you should be able to know that. But it seemed like the only person that was willing to tell me the truth about that was is no longer here. Um, I get messages from her on things that I used to witness my, my mom and my, my adopted dad arguing and fussing and fighting about him embezzling money from some guy about his daughter or, or about his kid. Um, keeping his daughter, keeping his child away from him. You know, my mom used to constantly say, you know, she she did her part, and he's for he's wrong for not abiding by what he 
it by his word. He went back on his word and she shouldn't have did that. And she used to say she has every right to know who her family is. And I never knew who she was talking about until now. Like, I, I guess because it, it used to traumatize me so much to witness so much, you know, abuse. I used to suppress a lot of things to where I had nobody to voice my my feelings to. So I had to always keep them suppressed. I always had to bottle it up. Because anything that pertained to my dad, I couldn't talk about. And I had nightmares constantly when I was a child about how my dad would tell me that you, you see tears come down his face and he says, hey baby, um, uh, he says, you know, I can't stay long and you see a tear coming down his face. And he says, let's enjoy the time we have just for now, okay? You know, and it's just like, he was trying to sugarcoat how much he was hurting because this is the only time he gets to see me and he will always tell me, um, but you know, I'll be here same time tomorrow, just like always. And that was the part I longed for, but every time this dream would end, it wasn't actually a dream, it was a hellish nightmare. Seeing my dad screaming, tell me how much he loved me. Making me to come back with these two people snatching me away. I had to deal with that every single night. And I woke up screaming. <laughs> Didn't know why I was seeing Prince in my dreams. Didn't know why, you know, he was telling me he loved me so much because. I just knew him as being my idol, somebody I looked up to, the parts that, you know, I was able to see. You know, I wanted to play in instruments like him. I wanted to be talented like him. And I just never knew why. Is this anything that I portrayed like my father? I was punished for it or it was snatched away so I couldn't do it anymore. And that's something I have to still deal with. And that's a hard pill to swallow. Dealing with this, it's been hard because I feel like, I guess it's just because it's a celebrity. It's harder to heal. And the only way I guess it keeps me going day by day is knowing how many people love him and how much they have inspired them and have got them through tough times. That That's what heals my heart is knowing how many hearts and lives he has touched. And knowing that he's loved has got me through this. But when I look at my family that has done this to me, um, I don't know if it's just the grief or it's this, the awakening that I'm going through. It's just that past vomit keeps coming up saying, how could you do this to me? I was your daughter. You adopted me. But you hurt me. And you emotionally scarred me for life. But I have made it. I have stayed strong. But there feels like a big part of me is missing. Because I can't get that closure. And I just long to be, you know, I've reached out to certain family members and I'm just like, please just listen. And I just, I hear my spirit guides tell me, we know all the things that you're going through and trust me. We, we know, just be patient just for a little while longer. It's just sometimes when you're strong and that's all you have, sometimes it, it just, it's hard to stay strong. Try not to give up. Thinking in your life is going to be like this forever and it's not. If you're going through things, don't think this is always going to be like this. It's, everything is temporary. You have to go through a full circle. But um, 
I thought, like I said before, I thought losing my mom to cancer and, and your uh, brain aneurysm and watching her deteriorate and couldn't do anything about it. I thought that was the worst thing I was going to go through. And losing my sister, um, my adopted sister too, when I was younger. I thought that was the worst thing I was going to go through. But losing my father, my biological father, and not ever seeing him. My heart breaks. And um, that, that that's a lot to deal with. Um, deal with grief. But I know uh, when I tell people my story, and, and they believe me because it's just uh, I keep finding more pictures, and I found this one picture of my dad, and I mean it's just it looks just like me, <laughs> so. He has a little mustache, you know, just, you know, I'll show my friend, I was like, girl, does this not really look like me? And it said, put that away. That looks so creepy. You know, you look too much like your father. And they were like, girl, we believe you. Um, they say, don't give up. You know, they've been hiding you in a closet for too long. It's time for you to shine. You know, wear your crown. And I'll act like I'm fixing my crown. And I'm like, yes, I'm strong. Even though um, I have my weak times where I miss my father a lot. I miss him terribly. My heart aches for that. Because I feel like uh, when you want a child that can't conceive, and God blesses you to be able to adopt a child, you don't abuse them. You don't punish them because of who their family is. You don't punish your child like that. You don't Children need discipline, but you don't do that. You know, um, I taught I taught myself how to play certain things on the piano, and um, when I learned how to play glamorous life, I got punished. Saying, "Who taught you that? Why would anybody teach you that?" I said, "I taught myself." And they said, "How?" Just by listening to it. And my mom knew I was talented like that. She's like, "She's just like her daddy. That baby is just like her daddy. You shouldn't deny her that." Because she acts just like him. That is not her fault. I was punished for it. I was punished for it. Um, when I played Purple Rain, I was, they said I could never, my dad was forbidden to be spoke of in the house. I couldn't play any of his music. And I couldn't do the piano. He scared me to the point. He chastised me to the point where I was scared to play. And he knew what he was doing. And he told me I was going to go to an institution because I thought about my dad too much. My gift was the illness because I had the second sight. I told him there was times I felt like I was held for ransom or somebody kidnapped me for money. And they tried to erase my memory to hold their dark secret. So that's my grief to have to deal with when it comes to my father. It's just living the truth, this tragic truth that this is was this happened, you know, your family kept you for money or whatever, just for personal gain, just because of who you were related to. So, um, you guys pray for me, please like and subscribe, write to me, um, just send prayers, please, um, for me to get through this, through this, tr this trying time, um, I know things are going to get better, and I feel it. Um, I'm just waiting on that, that special blessing. Um, I've been just getting blessings left and right, and I'm trying to stay strong. And But I guess today is one of those days that it was kind of emotional. So uh, that's the reason why I haven't really been making any videos, because it's been worse than this a few days ago. So I knew I had to pr pray and meditate and everything and cleanse myself because of all this negativeness because I know it felt like I went three steps back a little bit because I'm just like no 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 I, I don't want to deal with that but I know I have to heal 
you know, even though it's a very emotional thing to go through, I had to heal. So, um, guys, if you're going through something, just pray. Things are not going to, I mean, there's always somebody who's going through worse things than you are. Um, I try to stay humble and, and very grateful and graceful about the things that come out of my life and things that go out of my life. I pray for you. <laughs> I'm thankful for that, too. Um, but just keep your prayers up for me, please. Um, and I pray for you guys. Um, I love you guys. Uh, and you guys be good to each other. And I will talk to you another day. And live within love and light. And I'll talk to you later. Peace. And be proud.